Hi, I'm Carl. In this video, we're going to have a look at questions 27 to 32 in section 3 of the Purple Booklet. Questions 27 and 28 refer to hydrostatic and osmotic pressures along the length of the capillary. Question 27 asks if the hydrostatic pressure was very low, fluid in the system would show what movement? So in this question, we're going to be looking at um, what region of the diagram talks about hydrostatic pressure being very low, which is going to be on this side of the diagram, in which case there is reabsorption. Therefore, if there's reabsorption, there's going to be net movement from the interstitial fluid into the capillary. Things are being reabsorbed into the capillary. Therefore, the answer for number 27 is C. Question 28 asks, which of the following best helps explain why osmotic pressure is reasonably constant along the capillary? Well, looking at the diagram, we can see that with ultrafiltration, things are lost here and reabsorbed here. And as we move along, things that are initially lost are then reabsorbed. And the question tells us that the membrane is impermeable um, to plasma proteins. So that means that only the fluid and solutes that are initially lost are going to be replaced along the capillary, which in this case means the answer to question 28 is going to be D. The next set of questions for 29 to 32 look at Archimedes' principle. I've copied the diagram here, um, and the first question asks, what is the vertical distance between the centre of mass and the centre of buoyancy for the log? So those two terms are defined for us in the stem. I'm just going to draw a line here, which represents the water level across the log. Their centre of mass for a log that of uniform density all the way through is going to be the geometric centre, which we're just going to um, draw in here. If it's in the middle uh, of the entire log, that means uh, vertical, uh, vertically above the base of the log, this distance here is going to be 0.05 metres, half of the height of the log. For the centre of buoyancy, it's given as the centre of the portion of the log which is submerged, which is this section here. So the center of buoyancy is here, and therefore the height is going to be half of the height of the log, which is submerged, meaning that this distance here is going to be 0.015 meters. So the answer to number 29 is simply the difference between those. So 0.05 minus 0.015 meters. And that gives us an answer of 0.035. In this case, that corresponds to answer D. Next question asks, what is the density of the log? Well, we know that density is going to be the mass divided by the volume. And the mass of the log is going to be the same as the mass of the water um, that is displaced. So how do we work out what the mass of the water that is displaced is? Well, the mass of the water, I'm just going to do mass of W, is going to be the volume of the water displaced multiplied by the density of water. This is given in the question as a thousand, so the volume that is displaced is simply the volume of the log which is submerged. So the volume which is displaced is going to be 0.03 multiplied by 0.2 multiplied by 2. And that's going to give us an answer of 0.012 metres cubed. If we multiply this by the density, then we can get uh, 1000 multiplied by 0 0.012, which gives us a mass of 12 kilograms. And that's the mass of the water, which is displaced. And by Archimedes' principle, um, that will be the same as the mass of the log. So if we go back to our original equation, then the density of the log is going to be 12 divided by the volume of the log. And the volume of the log in this case is just going to be um, 0.2 times 2 times 0.1, which is going to be 12 over 0.04. That will give us a final density for the log of 300 kilograms per meters cubed. And in that case, that corresponds to answer B. Great, so question 31, it asks, suppose an object of 20 kilograms in mass is placed on the log such that the line of action of its weight passes through the centre of mass of the log. 
what is the initial, additional volume of the log which will be submerged. So we know the amount of water that is displaced um, has the same mass as the mass of the object that's floating. And we now know that the mass of this um, log plus the weight is going to be 32 kilograms. And again, we got this 12 from the previous question. So we're having a look at how much um, volume of water um, makes up 32 kilograms. Well, again, it's sort of the same question as before. We know that density is going to be the mass over the volume. Therefore, the volume is going to be the mass over the density. And if the volume then is going to be 32 kilograms of water divided by a thousand, the volume of that water is going to be 0 0.032 meters cubed. The initial um, amount of water that was displaced was 0 0.012, and that's what we got in our initial um, question, the previous question. So we just want to take that away from the new one to get the difference in volume, the additional volume that has emerged. In this case, that's going to give us an answer of 0 0.2 um, or 0 0.020 meters cubed. In this case, that goes with answer C. Question 32 asks, Suppose an object is placed on the log such as uh, the line of action of its weight passes through the centre of mass of the log, just as before. If the object is to completely submerge the log, which of the following is closest to the smallest mass that the object can have? So if the log is completely submerged, that means the volume of the water displaced is going to be equal to the volume of the log. In a previous question, we got the volume of the log, um, but we can just calculate that as being 0.2 times 0.1 times 2 gives us an answer of 0.04 meters cubed. So that's the amount of water that will need to be displaced. So let's work out what mass that corresponds with. So again, going back to our equation, density is mass over volume. We know, therefore, the mass of water that will be displaced and therefore the mass of the weight um, of the log with this extra weight on top is going to be the density times the volume. So the mass that is needed to completely submerge the log is going to be 0.04 multiplied by 1000. And that's going to give us an answer of 40 kilograms. We know the weight of the this mass here is going to be weight of the log plus this um, new additional weight that's added on top. And we know that will have to equal 40 kilograms in this case for the log to be submerged. And we know the weight of the log is 12 kilograms plus this additional weight equals 40. Therefore, the additional weight has to be 28 kilograms. And in this case, that corresponds to answer C. So that was questions uh, 27 to 32 of section 3 of the Purple Book. I hope that helped. Thanks for watching.